Hello, everyone. Uh, my husband just asked me, are you coughing on those videos? I said, I sure am. I'm coughing it up. I said, I don't think the church cares if I'm doing a little coughing, because I'm winning victory. The devil thinks he's going to shut me up. He better think again. Amen, church? He better think again. Because in the name of Jesus, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Home strengthens me. That's right. Amen. Church, today I'm going to be preaching from the book of Revelation, chapter 8 and verse 10. Woo, I love the Word of God. Now, church, I've done a study on this before, but I'm about to show you some new revelation from the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. I love the Holy Spirit. You, now, church, when he teaches me, you should hear him. I'm serious. When he's talking to me, he gets excited just like I do, and he'll say to me, that's good word, isn't it, Don? I said, yes, it is. I said, that's some good stuff right there, boy. And he'll say, it's amazing, isn't it? I said, yes, it's amazing. It's wonderful. I love that word. It's amazing. <coughs> I'm winning victory, Lord. Revelation chapter 8 and verse 10. <coughs> there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. That big old lying devil. First of all, the deceiver is coming as he is a morning star. Job chapter 38 and verse 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for uh, joy. Now what? What did we find out right here, church? He's not only coming as a morning star, but as he was the son of God. That's right, church. He's coming to deceive the world that he is the Christ. Not Jesus Christ, but the Christ. That's right. I'm not kidding. When the Holy Spirit told me that, I said, you got to be kidding me. He said, no. It is the truth. He's not coming claiming to be Jesus. He's claiming to be the Christ, Emmanuel. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 2, we see the sons of God, the mighty men of old. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 5, the heavens were of old, so we know he fell from heaven. So the star is showing himself as a son of God and now God, the Christ. The star fell burning as it were a lamp. Yeah, I did a study showing that that burning lamp in Isaiah chapter 62 and 1 is salvation. I found out from the Holy Spirit of God that he's not only coming to deceive the world, that he is salvation, he is the Savior He's coming as light. Can you believe that, boy? I tell you, them devils got some nerve. Coming to show the world that he is the light of the world. In the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 4, this is our Lord and Savior right here, church. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. What? What'd that word say? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. What's the deceiver coming as? He's coming as light, as the life of men. That's why Revelations 9 and 6, we see that men have long life because he's coming as the light of the world. Woo, them old lying devils. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The name of the beast will be Emmanuel. The Holy Spirit's done. Oh, he's been talking about this one a lot. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. We see that Jesus' name is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Jesus has not taken that name yet because Jesus came as the, the Messiah. When he returns, he will return as the fullness of God. He will then take that name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 2, we see that that deceiver that's coming will claim to be God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4. Here we go, church. We see in the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3, we see the dragon, which is Pharaoh. Ezekiel chapter 29 and verse 3. Verse 4. Tinkerbell? Verse 4. With his tail, he will draw the third of the stars 
the reason why he's after those stars, let me tell you what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, Donna, the reason why he's after those stars is because he does not have an army on the earth that can live forever. If they fall upon the sword, they'll die. So they're not immortal. They are still mortal, even though they can live a long time. But yet if they fall on the sword, they will indeed die. He said, so the dragon, Pharaoh, has gone up into the heavens to deceive the other stars to join him. I do not what, know what they are thinking. Who would want to leave heaven? Woo! Nahum chapter 3 and verse 12 tells us, All thy strongholds shall be like the fig trees when the first ripe figs. You see that? That's the devil's strongholds. That's his army. An army that cannot be killed. Revelations 12 and 9. The serpent is Pharaoh. He's also the devil. <coughs> the first son of God that he caused to fall from heaven was Adam. We know Adam fell from heaven because 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4 tells us that Adam was in the third heaven. We know Adam was a morning star. We know he is, was, not he is, was a son of God. Luke chapter 3 and verse 38. Look it up, church. And we see that he did fall. And we saw that the serpent went to cause him to fall in the book of Genesis chapter 3 and 1. So we see that the devil went up into the heavens to cause those that are in the heavens to fall. Here we go, church. In the book of Revelation chapter 6 <coughs> and verse 13. <coughs> the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. You hear that, church? We just found out that's the devil's stronghold. We saw that the devil went up in there in Revelation chapter 12, verses 3 and 4, to cause them to fall because he needed an army that could not die. <coughs> an army of the sons of God, the morning stars. We know that the sons of God fell to the earth. We know that in Genesis chapter 6 when they mingled themselves with the women on the earth. One thing I have definitely found out about our God is he is God about free will. <coughs> God gives his creation a choice to make. God does not make anyone love him nor serve him. And God is all about loyalty, and so am I. I am big on loyalty. <coughs> and I guess that's why God chose me, because he definitely knows that in my spirit, that is one thing that I have in me is loyalty. And so that's, I believe that's why he picked me, because he knows that I know what loyalty means. And God demands that. <coughs> He wants us to choose to love him with a free will. God doesn't want you to love him, <clears throat> excuse me, church, of what he can give you. You know, you to be blessed, you to live forever. God wants you to love him no matter what. He wants you to love him through the good times. He wants you to love him through the bad times. Let me tell you something, church. <coughs> it's easy. Do you hear me? It is easy to love God when you're blessed. When you have everything you have need of, <coughs> it's easy. But when that old enemy comes after you, and he's attacking you, and your little boat starts to <coughs> rock, and it starts to shake, and them waves are coming over the boat, and it looks like all is going under, can you praise him then? Can you love him then? Can you serve him then? Do you still have faith in your God? When this <coughs> happens to me and the enemy attacks me, I always say this <laughs> to God every time. And I still say it today. As a matter of fact, I just said it yesterday. I said, I might not know nothing. I might not know a thing. I only know one thing. 
I love God. I love him. That's all I know. I don't know anything else. And that's what I told Preston. I might not know anything. I know I love God. <coughs> Church, my heart goes out to those in the great tribulation. Oh, when I think about just the suffering that I endure. <coughs> and it's not easy. <coughs> I'm not telling you it is. It, there's times it's, it's rough. And to be in the great tribulation. <coughs> and you have to endure until the end. When if you don't take the chip, you don't take the mark, you can't buy, you can't sell. That means you're homeless. That means you can't get medicine. That means you cannot get food. That means you can't buy any things in the stores. That means you cannot live in society. Ooh, and we think we got it rough? We think it's bad now? And church, all of you that have been a, under attack from these storms, man, when I was watching the news <coughs> tonight, the Holy Spirit said, Look, Donna, I warned you that this would happen. And he said it will grow worse. He said the places that you are seeing... It will continue. It will continue to grow worse. And I said, Dear Lord, have mercy. Help these people. Church, we're moving in a time. We're going to see some stuff. We're going to see worldwide famine and drought and water. I've seen stuff, church, that I don't even want to talk about. There's things that I know, church, that I cannot even tell you that I've seen, that I know what's coming. May God go with each and every one of you and bless you and keep you. Now, I was talking to Preston last night, and he was telling me that Russia is going to cause World War III. And I said, well, if they do, then that means that the Antichrist will cause for peace. Preston said, but surely won't Russia shoot off a nuclear weapon? I said, well, we do know that the first trumpet in Revelation 8, it has to be a nuclear attack because a third of the trees in the grass are burnt. So we know there will be a nuclear attack. <coughs> I know America will be attacked, but this is one thing I do know by the Holy Spirit. Whoever rises up to cause for this peace, keep your eyes on him, church. He will be the deceiver. He will be the Antichrist. God bless you, church. God bless you.